Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel 90% Native. Today I am going to talk to you about a technique to grow your native plant seeds called cold moist stratification. If you haven't been here before, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Michelle and I grow native plants and I garden for wildlife. First, let's define what it means when I say native plants. These are plants that naturally occur in a specific region or ecosystem and haven't been brought in from another area. Native plants have evolved to thrive in very specific climate conditions. They also have developed relationships over many thousands of years with the, um, all the native insects in that area, the native animals, the native birds. Um, there are just so many relationships all intertwined between native plants and animals. And generally speaking, these are plants that have existed in a specific location prior to European settlement, if we're talking about the United States, where I live. <laughs> now, let's talk about stratification. Stratification is a process that seeds go through in order to spark germination. Some plants don't need any stratification or any germination requirements to germinate, but others do, like the ones we'll be talking about today, and they are going to require cold, moist stratification, and that is the process where seeds are exposed to periods of cold and um, moist weather over the course of a specific amount of time. So different seeds, different species need different amounts of cold stratification time. That could be as quick as 10 days, it could be as long as 120 days. So a lot of your um, indigos, like wild blue indigo, yellow indigo, yellow wild indigo, those only need 10 days of cold stratification. But then on the other end of the spectrum, you're talking about 120 days of cold, strat cold moist stratification. And a couple of those would be like your turtle heads and spider ones. <clears throat> My favorite way to grow my native plants is to cold stratify them naturally in the winter weather. And that means in my area here in Northern Virginia to get the absolute best results, I needed to have done that in November. And I typically like to do that a few weeks before Thanksgiving, and then I'm really setting myself up for success. However, if you want to grow native plants for your garden and you are starting a little too late, <laughs> you can uh, do this cold stratification process artificially using your refrigerator. And this method using your refrigerator is going to simulate the natural process um, as if you had sowed your seeds in flats and pots in November and put them outside and just let them sit until spring. Now I would like to ask you a favor. If this is content that you like, I would really appreciate it if you would follow me by subscribing to my YouTube channel. So click the subscribe button, click the bell button, and then you will be notified when I upload new videos on native plants. Okay, so how do you cold stratify your native plants? First, you need to get your supplies. So you need a Sharpie. And I know I've talked about Sharpies and paint pens in the past, and <laughs> I'm a little specific about those details. In this instance, a Sharpie is okay because you're not gonna be putting that ink outside that would fade and wash off um, in the elements. Okay, so get your Sharpie and then get, I use plastic bags. Now y'all know that I hate using um, single use plastic. So all but two of these bags I used um, last year and I will be using these as long as they will allow. So what I did is I just put some masking tape over my previous label. Is that masking tape, electric, whatever it is. Okay, and then I use these coffee filters. I use organic coffee filters. And the reason why I use organic is because the, um, the paper that doesn't have any bleach in it. And I just feel better about, you know, 
organic in my native plants, so whatever. That's what I do. Um, there you go for that. And then, you know, of course you have to have your seeds and get your coffee. You need your coffee when you're doing this. Okay, so that's it. We got, we have a Sharpie. We have our recycled plastic baggies. We have our organic coffee filters. And then we have all of our seats. Okay guys, first thing is first. Label your baggies first. I have made the mistake of not labeling all of my baggies. Uh, before like I get into the thick of it and what ends up happening is you're happening is you're dealing with water water gets on the baggies the sharpie won't work everything's wet it's a hot mess just label all of your uh, baggies so first. when I label the baggies I always put the name that I typically refer it to and if you've watched my channel for any amount of time you know I flip-flop between the botanical names and the common names all the time so I just put the name of the plant that I know it as so this I know it as the red elderberry and then I am going to put today's date which is I have no clue it is on oh, January 9th. Okay, so we're gonna do Jan 9. I am going to put down the day that the germination, this is such not a good example. <laughs> the germination code is a question mark on this one. I'm gonna go ahead and give this 60 days. So February 9th, um, March 9th, and February. so let's just put March nine i'm gonna put that i'm doing 60 days okay so that's done so now let me use one that actually is a better an example so we have here ohio spider wart i'm originally from ohio if in case um you were interested steubenville ohio i'm originally from steubenville ohio okay ohio spider wart Today's date, we said it was what, January 11th? Nope, January 9th, it's January 9th. Now, Ohio spiderwort is one that needs a really long germination time, that's 120 days. So that's gonna put us at January, February, March, April, May, May 9th, before I, I put these seeds um, into the soil. So I wanna make sure and point out to you all, ideally this, I would have done these back in November outside or have already started to cold stratify them. Okay, so let's say we're going to do 120. The next part is I'm gonna show you how I get the um, coffee filters moist and I'm gonna take you over to my faucet, my water faucet for that. You can use a, a spray bottle and it gets your um, medium wet that way. I just always use my faucet, so I'll go ahead and just show you what I actually do for me. So I already have a bunch of coffee filters separated over, over here, and I started um, getting my coffee filters wet when I realized my camera wasn't on. So anyway, I will um, continue getting my filters um, all moistened up. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna get it all completely wet in the faucet. And then I roll it up in like a little ball here. And then I unfold it. Just make sure there isn't any um, water dripping off of it. Any water drips you see right now are coming off of my hand. Okay, so here is another one. I'm just putting it on a plate over here to the side. So here is my plate of moistened, damp coffee filters. Now I'm gonna go back over to the table so that we can um, get the seeds down here into into the coffee filters and ready to cold stratify for the next 30 to 120 days. 
here we have the coffee filter. I'm gonna show you exactly how I do this because I'm a little bit detailed and uh, about things. So I just wanna make sure that you see exactly how I do things in particular. Okay, so let's start with Fire Pink. The reason why I'm doing Fire Pink is because I love Fire Pink, if you saw my last video. And also, I don't think I've ever cold stratified it. Um, I really have enough time to put it outside and let it cold stratify naturally, but I have, um, I think, two packets of seeds or three, so I just wanted to experiment with cold stratifying one packet to see if that actually gives it um, a better germination success. There's two more seeds in there. Okay, so I am going, what I do is I put these seeds right here in the middle, okay? And then I fold the sides over so that I have a square. Just a little square. Okay. So that is my little square. I'm very sorry, I didn't mention this earlier. I just realized just by total habit, I ran to go get some water. I also, because these are real, I really, really squeeze out all the water. Usually when, before I put them in a baggie, I just kind of like sprinkle a couple little drops of water, just a couple drops back on there before I put it in the bag. This is not an exact science. This is like Michelle's exact science. So if some of these little ways that I do things seem a little weird, well, they probably are. And it might not be the same way everybody does it. So anyway, I go ahead, I put them in there, squeeze out all the air. Okay, and then seal the bag and that is done. Okay, so before I put this in the plastic baggie, I'm gonna put like a little more water on this, which would, you probably, maybe you would consider this too much water. So what you're going to do here is you're gonna put these bags in the refrigerator, but every week you're gonna pull your bags out, take a look at them, and just make sure they don't have they're not too dry or they're not too wet. If they're too dry, you can just pat some water on it like I do or give it just like one spritz with a spray bottle. If they're too wet, like I made this one, I just get a paper towel and I just push down on the pack, that little square that I made, okay? And then I put it in I put it back in its plastic bag and put it back into the refrigerator. So that's just a little bit of troubleshooting. You just, you know, you just keep an eye on it and you'll get a feel for what's too wet or not wet enough. Once the baggies have been in the refrigerator long enough to fulfill the cold stratification uh, germination requirements, I will take them out of the refrigerator and I will pot them up. So I am going to sow the seeds like I would sow any other seed. Okay guys, just some additional information really quick that you may be interested in. So I said that once these guys come out of the refrigerator, you just sow them like normal. So if you want to know how I sow seeds, first off, I use my own potting soil. I do not use seed starting mix. And the reason why I don't use seed starting mix is because there's no nutrition in that mix. So if you're buying something off the shelf, go with something that is a potting mix because that should have some nutrition in it. Um, but I like to stay away from peat products so I make my own soil. The soil that I am finishing up using now is one third coconut core, one third leaf grow compost, and one third perlite 
and I may throw some vermic coarse vermiculite in there for good measure, whatever. That is the soil that I have prepared now with all the supplies that I've had building up. Now, I am switching over to trying out a different type of potting soil, of homemade potting soil, and I have no experience with this yet, but I will tell you that the recipe is going to be one-third pit moss, one-third rice hulls, and one-third of my own homegrown <laughs> compost. So, just at, in summary, I do not use a seed starting mix. I use a potting mix and I use my own homemade potting mix and my own homemade potting mix is evolving over time and there'll be more videos about that in the future. So that's the soil. Second, I also like to plant my native plant seeds in pots that are uh, deeper. So what I would recommend is using uh, yogurt containers or three inch pots or those two and a half inch pots. Don't use those little six packs for your native seeds if you can avoid it. The plants are gonna be in those pots longer than what your vegetable seeds are gonna be in. So they need a little bit more room to grow. And I just know that when I pop mine up and I use my big flats um, that are deep cells, so they're like this deep, um, the, the plants do a lot better. So soil that has some nutrition in it, vessels that, that are on the deeper side if you can, those are just a couple things that will hopefully set you up for success in getting your native plant seeds to germinate and then to thrive. Once oh my gosh, <laughs> I forgot something like always. Okay, so when you put your pots outside, if you have a problem with um, squirrels and chipmunks and all those little guys like getting into uh, your seed containers, you may want to consider putting some like fine, uh, mesh wire, uh, chicken wire, something like that over top of the um, of your pots and just like securing, securing it in place with rocks or um, bricks or something like that. So that might help uh, keep any little critters out of your pots. So that is actually the last uh, the last tip that I wanted to give you. Now, I just did a couple videos about a bunch of native plants. Uh, some native plants that are new to me, some that aren't, and they all, except for maybe two that, didn't, that don't need any sort of germination requirements, could be artificially cold stratified. So I will link those two videos here so you can go check them out if you want. So that's it. By following these steps, you can artificially cold moist stratify your native plant seeds using the refrigerator. It's really a helpful trick if you're late in the season and getting things started. So I wish you the best of luck. If you have any questions about what I've said, please put it in the comments below. I'm happy to answer any of those questions. And I really hope that you found this information helpful. And if you did, and if you are still here with me, I would love it if you would give this video a like. And happy gardening, guys. I will catch you again next time. Mm -hmm.